Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Woody Banter Book Club podcast. I am Maddie here with Courtney. Hello, and today, Matt. Well, first of all, today when we're recording this is actually Valentine's Day. Hello, don't we just it's love a great love? day? Yeah, we love love round here. It's a great day to be a girl who likes pink. Oh, it so is. It's a I good personally... day to be a girl who loves romance. I do love romance. More of a red gal, to be honest. Uh, between pink and red. But I do love heart-shaped things, so let's go. Um, who doesn't? <laughs> today, Meadows. Maddie and I will be reviewing uh, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. Um, which, this book is actually the second in a... It's actually the third. Oh, a third? I thought it was yeah. the third. <laughs> no, I did, it's the third. I did read perhaps the, the first kiss, book. The, quiz, the kiss quotient is the mm, first one. I did read that one. So. Yeah. Uh, but you can read them independently. You don't need to. Definitely. Really? I think there was a couple things in this book where I'm like, who the hell are these people and why are we just not touching on them at all? But it's because they got their you whole know, own book. They got a whole, yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. Take us away, maestro. Okay. Well, uh, the heart principle is about Anna and Quan, and together they are they are a okay well okay so anna <laughs> anna's going through something anna she is a musician she plays the violin and for a long time she like has really struggled with perfection when it comes to performing the violin she has not been able to get through this specific music piece that was written specifically for her and it is causing a lot of stress in her life. Her family's constantly asking her, like, how's it going? How's the music piece? How's, how's, it, how's it hanging? And she can never really answer because she is too ashamed to talk about that she is struggling with this burden of playing this music all the way through. Because she's never done it. She just, it never sounds good enough to her. Uh, on top of that, she has a boyfriend who sucks. His name is Julian, and I hate his guts. Um, yeah, he's kind of the worst person ever. Honestly, yeah. So she's dating Julian, and they've been together for a while. Like five and, years. Yes, five years. She goes over to his house. Not, they don't live together at this point. And he's like, this is like after they perform, she performs a certain act that she doesn't like. Like literally seconds after she does not, she performs this act. He's like, I think we should like maybe see other people for like a little bit and see if maybe like this is you know, this is really what we want. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love you and I want to marry you. And like, I know you're the person I want to marry, but I also want to see what else is out there, you know? And she's just kind of like, okay, uh, I don't want to do that, but I guess I don't have a choice because something else Anna really struggles with is speaking um, out and kind of like defending herself and speaking what she believes to be wrong. She, speaking out against things that she believes to be wrong. She doesn't have a very good track record with that and that plays a huge element in this entire story is her lack yeah. of ability to communicate her feelings uh and yeah on the other hand we got kwan and kwan is a karate instructor um slash a karate instructor slash influencer yeah fashion star he, also a motorcyclist. Yeah. He's he's our resident bad boy. He's tattooed. <laughs> he's got he's got ocean tattoos all over his body. And you know what? Quan really did it for me. You know what? I really like him. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a, I think this is gonna be a good one. Um Quan is going through his own thing. He a year ago he was diagnosed with testicular cancer and he had one of his balls removed. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> not funny. <laughs> it's not funny, but I just can't say the word balls without laughing a little bit. Anyway, he had one of his testicles removed because of his cancer and he has not dated or like been with anybody since that has happened and he's decided, you know what? I think it's time for me to get to get back in the sack, okay? It's time for me to... <laughs> in the sack. 
Um, <laughs> I was thinking more like the like a bed, like that's what they refer to, like getting back in the side. Well, I didn't yeah, even put no, those I two things mean, together. But <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well he's like, okay, I'm ready to start, you know, dating again and see what my life is like post this massive surgery that I've had. So he downloads an app and I forgot to mention Anna downloads the same app because she's like talking to Julian and Julian's like, well, I know you're not going to hook up with anybody while we're on this break. So like, what's like, I'm just going to go out and explore and you just do what you're going to do. See what it's like to be by yourself waiting for my return. And she's Ugh. like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to download an app and I'm going to go on a date with somebody and I'm going to sleep with somebody else and just get back at, at Julian. Which, like, honestly, not the right response, because the correct no. response is actually purchasing a gun. <laughs> um, his ass is dead. <laughs> no. Yeah. No thanks. Girl. He, mm. she, they both, okay, so they meet up. They, they like, match with each other on the, the apps. And their first matching, like, instance is they're both watching my, the, my teacher octopus or the teacher octopus or whatever it's called on netflix and that reminds me of kate because kate loved it and she was like i cried so hard watching this <laughs> that's funny so yeah I, I they're watching that together like over text message and they've got a lot of like good chemistry and they decide to meet up and they deal with a couple of other things along the way right before they meet up is it right? No, it's right after they meet up for the first time. Anna is diagnosed then with uh, high functioning autism, or as you might know it, Asperger's. Um, but we we don't call it that anymore. It's not called that anymore. It's just high functioning or persons with high functioning autism or something along those lines. I'm sorry, I'm not the most PC language knowledge having person, but I think that's what it's trying our best. Yeah. So she's diagnosed with autism and she spends a lot of time in this book kind of dealing with the diagnoses and figuring out what that means for her life and how she can tackle some of the things that she struggled with and her changing family dynamics throughout the entire book. She has, she has a lot of things that happen regarding family in this book and yeah, I think that kind of gets the plot up, for the yeah. first part the I, I guess i don't know is it a spoiler to talk about what happens in the middle of the book say so i mean we can loosely talk about it this deals this book deals with a lot of large concepts one self image yeah. uh between both of the main characters two family dynamics um terminal illness um also obviously Quan had cancer so dealing with um you know life after potentially almost dying then we also have coming into a diagnosis you know that sense of self and also kind of like oh crap <laughs> um lots of different dynamics this book is like it's a romance but this is not like a fun cutesy like this is a heavy hitter you know um yeah but definitely. i think i let's not talk about what happens until we get a little bit okay later on but generally yeah there is a life-altering event within the family where there is a, mm -hmm. a terminal illness so a lot to do yeah with. yeah okay so if you have never joined us before or you have forgotten since the last time you watched, we do a spoiler-free review and then we'll do the spoiler review. So during our spoiler-free review, we talk about whether or not we'd recommend this to a fellow reader, if we'd recommend it to somebody under the age of 18, or our sisters, or in this case, it's really just Cordy's one sister now. <laughs> yeah. uh, then we will talk about the character development the witty banter the smut and the realism of the book which are our four pillars then after that we'll move on to the spoiler section but we'll tell you before we move over to the spoiler section so you are in the clear you're in the safe zone right now oh i thought you were gonna say something no <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay okay so courtney would you recommend this book to a fellow reader uh yeah i would 
you know, I think it's like, like you said, it's not like a fun cutesy. It's not like Hallmarky, but like I think there's a lot of really good undertones. I think it deals with like the stigma around certain mental health disorders or personality disorders and stuff uh, pretty well. Um, and I do, I do like that there is like some sort of representation for people who are like on the spectrum in romance literature. That's something that like Helena, Helen Huang does throughout the entire series based on the other book that I read. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I would recommend it. I will also give them like the caveat, like, Hey, (laughs) not fun and cutesy like there's some pretty serious undertones not any like trigger warning type stuff but it is definitely something where like you can feel a lot of the emotions and like anxiety coming off of the page uh Mm -hmm. and so like i do think it's something that like you have to be in the right mindset to read if that makes sense yeah i was not expecting the story to be what it ended up being when i cracked open the book you know Mm -hmm. so Okay, um, I would also recommend this book to a fellow reader. I think that it's a great story. Even if you've read the first two, like, don't even bother. Like, go, just go read this one. It's fine. <laughs> like, I haven't read the first two yet. I'm, like, halfway through the second one because I'm reading them backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Although I literally own the Kiss, like, it's right here, but I've, rent- I've rented the other one on on uh, Kindle and it came up and I was like, oh, I gotta read this before it yeah. goes away. Understandable. So, um, yeah, I, I'm reading that one right now, and I really, I really enjoy the book that we read, the the Heart Principle. I think it was really good. I I liked pretty much everything in it, and I think that anybody who reads it should, like you said, go into it with the mindset that, like it's not just going to be a cutesy romance. There is cutesy romance in it, but mm. it's not just a cutesy romance. And I liked it. I think it kind of. I think it's a good balance for me between cutesy and not. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this to somebody else. There's a, there's technically like a third act breakup in this book too, but it makes a lot of sense with the plot. Like it was Mm -hmm. not infuriating like it normally is to me. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Which is something that's kind of hard to do, but like with the the way the plot was set up, kind of masterfully done. So Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me, the third act breakup in this kind of reminds me of the third act breakups in some Emily Henry books, Mm -hmm. because a lot of the times those third act breakups also make sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I agree. Okay. Would you recommend this book to somebody under the age of 18? No. (laughs) No, there's some, (laughs) you know, in it. And um, Mm -hmm. that's the same for, (laughs) I read the Kiss Quotient, it's the same for that that book as well it is this book's just a boy it's a complex beast lots of real life stuff but there is this small element and romance so it's not appropriate for people under the age of 18 it's still a very good book mm-hmm. though i agree it, there i think it's like the second chapter that she's like with julian and i'm just reading it and i'm like oh you poor thing <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing girl we all been there <laughs> Not me, and not on Ash Wednesday. Are you kidding? <laughs> um, <laughs> girl, you lie. <lying. laughs> um, but yeah, I not appropriate for somebody mm-hmm. under the age of eighteen. Not even okay. Really now let's move on to the pillars. Uh, let's start with the witty banter, Cordy. What would rate, what would you rate this on a scale of one to five? Um, because ten is too many, and we don't do halves. So that's a reminder to myself, not to Courtney, um, that we don't do halves, because I almost did that last week, and I was like, oh, what an idiot. What a stupid idiot She's been I am. internalizing this, apparently. Yeah. Uh, really, I've like made like a mental note, like, remember. Um, anyway, what would you rate the, the witty banter in this book? I think that's probably going to be like the, like the lowest numerical number I give, and the reason behind that, like, lots of heavy undertones. Also, if you didn't know this, people with autism struggle sometimes with sarcasm, and they're very, they tend to be very direct. Now, I do think they're, like, Quan is somewhat of a funny person, but, like, the side characters are kind of villains, so they're not really, like, 
fun people. Um, the dialogue is good, uh, but it's not really, it's not really, like, funny, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it just doesn't suit the characters or the plot, and so, like, there's not a lot of room for wit there. So I'm gonna, because I like the dialogue a lot, I think I'll give it, like, a three, but it's just not a good category for this particular book because of all of the things that are going on. But it doesn't detract from the plot. No, totally, because, uh, like you said, people with autism do struggle to pick up on sarcasm and stuff like that. Quan is not making sarcastic comments to Anna. He is well aware of her diagnoses, and because of that, he kind of tailors his li- like his, his verbiage and his wording to, to be that, to, to, to help her understand what he's saying without it coming off as, like, inf- infantilizing yeah. or something that you know, doesn't rep like, I don't know. It just wouldn't make sense if Woody Banter was in this book. That's what I'm trying to get at. But yeah, he, because of his, like his family life, he's a lot more apt to being able to communicate, which I think will contribute more into the realism category, but important to note. So what yes. was your number though? Oh, um, I'd probably give it probably a three as well. Okay. Okay. What about the character development? What would you rate that on a scale of one to five? Five. Five. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was good. They were struggling with like some really heavy stuff that's not easy to navigate. And a lot of times I think when people are reading books like this, they're like, hey, well, the answer is so simple. But like, if it was your life, it wouldn't be, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like dealing with family members and certain expectations, dealing with disenfranchisement in your career, wondering if you made the right choice, dealing with relationships terrible boyfriends um like and then adding on top of that the struggle of having a disability uh Quan also is going through some stuff right like um he almost he could have died he as a man has lost part of what makes him feel very like masculine aside from the tattoos and the motorcycles and stuff and so like it's a very like real struggle to have to start dating again and he's also like trying to figure out professionally um what they're doing with their company like it's a lot of stuff that i think like people in it's a lot of different things that people in the real world deal with very often and like the way in which the characters interact makes sense and it also and i this these this category and realism are going to be heavily intertwined because like the struggles are very realistic but like the character development made sense i thought the timeline was pretty good too it didn't feel super rushed um and by the end like they're still the same people um they've just learned how to do things like set boundaries and um I don't know. I just I thought it was really good. Very heavy undertones, very realistic character development. Um and that was it it really just like made the book. Like the book is character development in mm-hmm. my opinion. So, 5 hands down. I would give it I would also give it a 5. I think both of them are just like Anna she has to she has to deal with so much stuff in this book that it changes her fun like regardless if she didn't even have character development like it would have changed her fundamentally like the events that happen in in this Mm -hmm. book but she really does like i think that one of the best examples of this and this is a little bit of a spoiler i'm not going to say like exactly the event but you'll know what event i'm talking about there's an event in this book where something like major happens And you're reading it, and you're reading her internal dialogue of what just happened, and you are so frustrated with her. You are like, oh my gosh, like, you you know what you want, and yet here you are doing this, and it was, like, very frustrating to read. Yeah. And you think about it, and what she does after the fact shows that she has character development. Yeah. Because she learned from what had happened and she uses that to not make excuses for herself, but to go and actively look to improve what happened. Yeah. Um, When she uses that lesson 
to just not change herself, but to be, like, a better mm -hmm. person and to stand up for herself. Like, she actually, yeah, she learns from what happens. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then Quan, he has something also that happens at the end of this book for him. There's actually a couple of things that happened in his life throughout this book that are, do doesn't apply to Anna. Like, it's separate from Anna, mm -hmm. and it's his own story besides her. And I think that that was a good, like, those had good elements of character development, but I think that his, like, self-image and his willingness to... I just think that his self-image really improved in this book. And mm -hmm. he realized what he wants and, like, what boundaries he's willing to put up with and what he's not willing to put up with. And he commute. One Okay, Quad is just, like, an excellent communicator, mm -hmm. and he's so patient, like, the entire book. So, like, I can't say those are his character developments, but he just becomes more patient and more, like, thoughtful as the book goes on. Yeah. So. I guess he changes in that as well, but he's he's that from the start. So his do, character development yeah. is overshadowed by Anna's because it's so prominent, but yeah. Well, I think, too, there's something to be said about, like, a lot of these books, they'll try to make the characters do a 180, and, like, he's very consistent throughout, and you just see good characteristics come more so to the forefront, which makes a lot of sense, and I think it was pretty masterfully done um but yeah he does get overshadowed in a lot of senses um but i also really like the book because they are together but they're dealing with things that only they as individuals can deal with whereas like i think a lot of other romance books they get so heavily tied up in like this one problem is now both of our problems and that's just not mm -hmm. like what being an adult in a a relationship is like like you still have independent struggles Brenner can support you through that but it doesn't it, it doesn't eclipse the entirety of what you have going on you know yeah and i like that they Definitely. can be independent people with independent struggles going through this together in a book mm -hmm. it's real good i think that every romance book tries to do that mm -hmm. like I, every single one of the books behind me try to do that well most the ones that have dual povs try to do that yeah and I think this is the first book, with maybe the exception of, like, When in Rome and Things We Never Got Over. Like, our, like the ones that we've, like, vocally been like, we like these. I think this one has done the best job out of all of them. Like, out I, of yeah. every, every, even the good ones, like, I think that this has done a better job than even the ones that we like. I agree. 100%. Yeah. So. Hats off. Hats off to you, Helen. Um, okay, so let's move on to the smut. Now, I'm not going to lie. This, I think, is going to be the lowest tier for me. I'm probably going to give it a two just because, like, it was fine, whatever. It was just kind of, like, technical or whatever, and I was reading it, and I was like, okay, good for you. Like, finally, something good happening. <laughs> But in terms of like the like the spiciness and stuff like that, it probably just a two. Like it's not super spicy or anything. I can yeah, I guess I agree with that. In my head, I give it like a higher score. I think because it just fits the characters and the story so well, right? Like this is not like a dark romance novel. It's not like just a straight up smut book right like I feel like going into those you know what you're looking for mm -hmm. this one is more so like this is an adult relationship with like a lot of external factors going on um and having the main character one of the main characters be an autistic person you have to worry about things like sensory and um making sure people are comfortable and so it is, it's a natural progression of their adult relationship. I think the smut in the book fits the plot. I think if it was, like, crazy and, like, less <laughs> descriptive or, like, less, almost clinical, it wouldn't make sense. That doesn't suit the characters. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's not, like, a driving factor. So I'll give it, I don't know. I know we consider, like, multiple things. It's not super spicy. It doesn't happen super, super frequently. But I do think that, like, 
it fl- it fits the the plot really well for what mm-hmm. the book is. So that in my head is why I'm giving it a higher score. So I'm gonna give it a four for that. Valid. I think I think it's just I think you're right. It's just so normal, mm-hmm. you know, that I think that if you're looking for something spicy, this is probably not gonna be the one for you. Actually, mm-hmm. it's definitely not gonna be the no. one for you. You're probably <laughs> If you're looking for just spice, this is not going to be the story for you. I have some recommendations, though, if, yeah. you, want it, if you want those. Um, but this is not an example of a book that I would be like, go read it for the smut at yeah, the no. end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Um, Finally, the realism. What would you rate it on a scale of 1 to 5 for the realism? Obviously a 5. Oh, um, five. Again, I really... It's all the same things that I said for character development, like two people struggling with things independently, working through them together, um, you know, dealing with being in a relationship with someone whose brain works differently than yours is going to inevitably have certain challenges. And a lot of the emotions, like the anxiety comes off the page. Um, some of the fear, uh, it, a lot of the struggles that both characters go through, I think, are just things that, like, every person in the world experiences, just magnified because of different external events. And, like, I, the timing and the pacing was good. The plot made sense based on the characters. I just, it was good. It's a five, hands down. Mm-hmm. Masterfully executed. Mm-hmm. I would say that the realism is a five as well it, there's there's nothing that's like suspends your disbelief you know you every single thing that happens in this book you're like okay yeah that makes sense there's even kind of something silly that uh kwan does like towards the end of the book and mm-hmm. even that i'm like that makes sense for him yeah so, <laughs> i agree uh, yeah it's just very well written and it the i mean it just makes everything makes sense and nothing feels out of place at all. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. So, what would you get this book overall on a scale of one to five? Um, I, it's a five for me, truly. I gave it a five too. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just it's really good. I think I've kind of been like a slump lately too, and this one mm-hmm. just really. I think it's it's just a little bit different than what we normally do. It's not entirely romance, not entirely smut. It's a lot of different things and I just liked that like you can resonate with the people on the page even if you're not going through what they're going through and I think that takes a lot of talent as an author and so I have a Mm -hmm. lot of respect um for her and I've read two of her books now and really enjoyed both of them so yeah it it was an enjoyable read that's for sure Mm -hmm. I also gave it a five. I was surprised by how much I liked this book, too. Like, I cried at the end of it. I was like, I don't want it to be over. <laughs> um, but I really I really enjoyed the story. I loved the characters. I love Quan. I just love him so much. And I think that this is our first five of the year. It is. And you know what I think I like about this book so much, too? Is that like a lot of times I think authors will go and try and include people in their books just for like the sake of diversity. Whereas like I feel like this story was actually crafted around representing people who come from that particular group. I think this book is just a good a good example of like writing a good character that is diverse. Uh like it doesn't feel like it's just there for, like, the shock value or just to, like, have someone there to have them there. Like, it's actually crafted around that character and what makes them diverse. And, like, I, I think that type of writing is just not something we see as often nowadays. And especially making them the main characters, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just toss them in as, like, a side character. It's less impactful that way. So mm-hmm. I think... um. Like the Wong amount of is just a great author, to be honest, has a good yeah, understanding. The, the amount of times that I've read a book where the innkeeper uses they them pronouns is annoying. 
Like that's like you at that point you're not throwing it in there because you're like, "Oh, I really care about this issue and I'm going to put it in there and it's going to be in my romance book." It's it's performative. Sorry. I hate to say it, but yeah. it is. And there For- there is definitely like a line between performative and like writing a compelling story that is centered mm-hmm. around people who are living these lives. It's yeah. different. Yes. Uh the author who did Red, White, and Royal Blue has a book coming out this summer called The Pairing, and that book is going to be featuring a character that uses they, them pronouns, and I actually don't know what the other person is. But I have high hopes for that. I have, I mean, yeah, I can't wait to read to read that book, so. August 8th, in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> Perfect, post-bar. Yeah, <laughs> but I do think that it is important to have these sort of stories and I think that Helen does an excellent I mean on a first name basis with her now Helen just (laughs) (laughs) Helen does an excellent job of it she she's really killing it I I love the second book I'm reading right now the it's the bride test is the second Mm -hmm. book in the series since I'm reading it backwards and then I'll read the kiss quotient and I I really I really enjoy these stories all the characters are so well thought out and I just I, I'm really loving it, so. And I think, it's been a long time since I've felt this way about, like, a romance book, so. Me too. I think, like, part of Helen's thing, since we're on a first-name basis with her now, <laughs> is that, like, she picks groups of people who are generally, like, have a, a negative stigma within society. Like, Quan has a lot of tattoos, and he rides a motorcycle, right? Um... Obviously, Anna has autism in some of the other books. Like, there are people who have, at one point or another, been involved in um, Schmeck's work. And, like, these are people who I think a lot of times either society is generally just views as, like, not being worthy of love or devotion. And so I think including them in compelling stories, like, I think it helps destigmatize a lot of these things that people look down on. Like everybody is deserving of love. Um mm-hmm. and everyone is capable of having these wonderful fantastical love stories even if they're not in this particular sense it wasn't super sensationalized, but you know what I mean? Like I think she mm-hmm. does a good job of picking people like that and then representing them in her books. Yeah, I think so. Right. Okay. Well, I guess we will move on to the spoiler portion. So if you have not read this book, get out of here and go get read out. it. Yeah. Um, if you have read the book, please stay and let's talk about some spoilers. So, okay. Goodbye. See you later. All right. Do you have any specific spoilers you'd like to talk about? Well, let's just start right off the bat. Um, she- <laughs> the beginning of the book, She's like, I have to give Julian a head, and I hate it. And then she does it anyway. And then, after she's done, he's like, I think we should open our relationship. I was like, I, I'm i buying a gun. Especially if you make me do it first, and then you do it. Yeah. Like, what a horrible per. What a ho- Like, Julian, I'm picturing in my head, because they're in San Francisco, he's just like a business guy, right? And he just thinks that he's the greatest freaking thing to ever happen to Earth, and that he's the most successful businessman that San Francisco has ever seen. And I'm like, I hate you. I literally hate your guts. To make sure that, like, this is right. And I'm like, I'd like, and then That's he not how it works. He constantly, Bucko. like, emotionally manipulates her like their families are very heavily intertwined and he capitalizes Mm -hmm. on that he's an evil vindictive man who thinks she is stupid and he can manipulate her and embarrass her and i Mm -hmm. hate him yeah they they get so he he decides they're getting married at her dad's birthday right Mm -hmm. is it her dad's birthday yeah it's at her dad's birthday, who, by the way, is dying. Like, they have they have connected him to a food tubing system, and he's in 
not in hospice care because they're not putting him in hospice. He's like in medical. He has he suffers from a stroke and he is not treated right away. And because of that, he, the negative side effects of a stroke have really impacted him, and he's gonna die. And he does die at the in, in this book. So he he's it's his last time being his birthday. Anna is supposed to play the violin, which she can't do because she still has not come to terms with, like, her perfectionism when it comes to performing this piece of music that she just physically cannot get herself to perform. She can't get herself to perform anything because nothing sounds good to her. Her dad is in a wheelchair, non-responsive, because he is incapacitated and very sick and dying. And Julian shows up to the party who, when she did not want him to. Um, her mom or her sister took the, it upon themselves to invite him and she is talking to him and he's like, yeah, you know, like I, that was a great experiment or whatever, but I finally know you're who I want. Do you know what that means? And oh. she's like, yeah. Well, it's not and even then, just that. He's like, I slept with like a lot of women. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's like, I slept with like 30 people. And she's like, I slept with somebody too. And oh, he's and like, well, he I guess I, as hell. And he's yeah. like, well, I guess I deserve that, right? Because I wanted to have an open relationship, but I can't believe you would do that. Meanwhile, he's like, it was so fun. I had lots of great experiences and some bad ones. And now I know that I want you to be my wife. Yeah. So then he calls every at at this dying man's birthday party. He says, hey, everybody, just want to let you know Anna and I are getting married. And Anna's like... Uh, I did not agree to that. And then she looks over and she sees Quan, who showed up to be there for her. And well, he runs inside, away. She's like, I don't want this. I'm gonna, but I don't want to like embarrass him. I'm like, girl, embarrass the fuck out of him. Yeah, the way <laughs> that I would not hesitate. You need to humble that man immediately. <sighs> yeah, which of course then goes into the third act breakup, which was Quan just being mm-hmm. like, I'm not doing this. And, like, he knows about Julian, too, but, like, mm-hmm. okay, back on onto her dad, actually. Like, this is something we're going to have to discuss a little bit. Like, so, yeah, he has that stroke, and then her, I hate her sister. <laughs> One thing I actually really loved about this book is that they never have a resolution at the end, either. Because sometimes it just be like that. Sometimes it just be like that. But, like, her sister, won. Is it's very obvious has like been an absolute bitch to her her entire life. She tries to tell her that she gets diagnosed with autism by a mental health professional, and her sister's like, "No, you're just anxious. You've yeah. always been like this." And like her sister even yes, brings it up to she's one autistic. of their <laughs> sister brings it up to one of their friends, and her friend is like, "Yeah, that makes sense." And her sister's like, "No." Um. Which was just awful, right? Because she's already kind of, like, she gets the diagnosis, and then she's, like, kind of getting, like, a sense of self, right? Like, the pieces are clicking together. Now I know why I act this way. I'm not, like, weird or crazy. Like, it's just something that, like, has been deeply internalized, right? And her parents and her sister, like, her family has very unrealistic expectations of her. She doesn't feel like she has ever made them proud, like, very deeply hurtful things that she's had to live with but so her dad gets sick she puts basically her whole life on hold which you know she was kind of struggling with music generally but like that doesn't mean that her doing that isn't valuable and like her sister just constantly calls her like lazy and stuff because she's not some big wig new york exec um and like she just doesn't Ugh. And so, like, she's taking care of her father, and during this time, like, her dad is trying, like, one, when her dad first got sick, they had a conversation of, like, okay, are we gonna, is he gonna continue to live this lifestyle, or are we gonna, you know, let him die peacefully? And no, of course, they drag it out. Her family insists that they have to do it within the family, so they won't let her hire anybody to help. and just constant she and like she's constantly taking care of her father who has indicated to her that he wants to die 
Um, and she internally is like, we've like, I don't know how to fight my mom and my sister on this. We've already started this journey. Now we got to like finish it out. Um, and there's parts of the, you know, like, I think this is something too that adds to the realism that people just might not want to talk about. There are parts of the book where she's like, I wish my dad would die because I feel like I am enslaved to taking care of a man who would rather be dead. And if I say anything, then I'm going to be the villain to like my sister and my mom because I want my dad dead. And her sister does weaponize that against her later. Which for me was really like the point of no return, right? Telling right. telling someone that you are like struggling with something mentally and that you need help. And also that like your father is very sick and then using that to embarrass them in front of a group of people who know both of you super well is just absolutely disgusting to me. But like it, it's part, I think part of taking care of someone who is that ill, especially when you don't know if they want to die or live, I think it's pretty realistic for at some point to be just like, I wish they were out of their misery. I mm -hmm. like, I love this person, but they're not the same. And like my life is being ruined because of this. Like my mental well being is being ruined because of this. There's one weekend where her sister's like, Oh, go take a vacation. And she literally just sleeps the whole time. And her sister is just constantly, like, berating her, calling her lazy, and she, like, guilt-tripping left and right. Like, she is just, her and Julian, the absolute villains of this book. Um, And meanwhile, you know, Quan is so understanding about the situation with Julian. He knows how to communicate with her. He is constantly around like trying to help out and her parent her mom and her sister look down on him significantly because of his appearance and he also says that it's because he's vietnamese and not yeah. chinese yeah so there is a little bit of like um interracial issues too within the family um their perception of different types of asian people um but like and Quan, he he is in the fashion industry. He has a really successful business with his cousin. They're potentially being bought up, acquired by Louis Vuitton. And like her sister just is constantly diminishing this and being like, "Oh, it's not a." He probably sells T-shirts out of his mm -hmm. trunk. Um, and like meanwhile, he's like trying to support her through all of this, and they're being very vocal about the way, or at least like their physical actions are indicators of the way that they feel about him. So he's really going through it. Like, he's just trying to be there for her. He knows it's not her fault, but, like, that constant... After, two feeling for so long after being sick, you know, and trying to get back out there and start dating again, feel valid in yourself, especially around women, and then to have a group of women just constantly rate you for your value as a person because of how you look or like who your parents are but yeah that and you know when her dad finally dies it's sad but it's also like a sense of freedom for her mm -hmm. um and it's after she finally stands up for herself so i'm sure like it'd be a really tough mental battle to go through right like could have just pushed through to the end but like she does eventually stand up for herself right and her sister's like why don't you just move out and i'm like girl finally like this is not what your dad would have wanted for you this is not any sort of life your family relations aren't improving with this going on and then she's able to take that lesson mm -hmm. saying no and apply it to her life and she tells julian to go kick rocks because he sucks mm -hmm. which is As awesome. she should kwan decides to run the grand canyon <laughs> And my favorite part is when he's running it and he just falls and he just lays there and he's like, this is it. <laughs> um, he's like drinking water off his parka. Yeah. And like, I that's, he's just deflecting, like, and using physical exertion as a way to deal with his emotions, which should be careful, shorty, because you were sick. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, I don't know. I think, too, like, he, so he gets approached, right? He goes to a meeting for the business. And they're basically, they basically tell him, they're like, 
the the acquisitions guy is basically like, yeah, we don't want you to be around when we get this. And so that really like sends him off the deep end to and right after is when he sees Julian propose. And so that just mm-hmm. snowball spiraling. Right? Yeah. Right. And then his cousin shows up and he's like, I would never want you out of the business. Like, come on, man. Uh, mm-hmm. And then thankfully it does end up working out at the end of the book. They're like, that guy sucked. We fired him and we still want your brand. Here's an extra 20%. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's like the only part that's suspension of disbelief, but I'm choosing to believe that that happened. <laughs> yeah, here, let's explain this. Let's girl math this. It's Louis Vuitton. They've got money to throw around and they know yeah. that they hurt his feelings. So why don't we get him? Why don't we schmooze him a little? 20% is a big, a big jump though. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. I, yeah, I love Quan. I keep saying that, but I really do. I love him. He's just, he's so patient, and he's just, like, kind. Mm-hmm. He's just great, and he's hot. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Our yeah. little resident outside bad boy, inside good boy. <laughs> he is! No, outside he's black cat, inside he's golden retriever. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I love that. A little sweetie pie. <sighs> what a combo. Mm. Let's see. What else can we talk about? Um, well, I mean, I guess the only, like, one of the other underlying themes, obviously, is, like, dissatisfaction with the career that you have chosen, or imposter syndrome. I think that's something everybody at some point can resonate with in their job, yeah. in their career. Um, and then kind of coming out of a slump like that. I'm sure, especially with art, it's a lot different, right? Yeah. Like, there's parts of my job that I can still do even if I don't feel particularly inspired. And so I can't imagine, like, trying to create music or paint something when you feel that way. Um, yeah. Especially when, you know, the visual or audio representation of what you're doing, like, other people can perceive that. You know, like, if I mess up some numbers, I can go fix them. But, like, once you've sung a song, once you've painted a piece, like, it's out there and people are Mm -hmm. looking at it and it's a reflection of of you. So I can definitely see how that's different. But girl finishes her song by the end. Hello. Woo! (laughs) Yeah, she does. And she plays Happy Birthday for Quan. The ending of the book, it goes by pretty fast, the Mm -hmm. ending of it. Like, there's, like, months, years there's like a year that's like yeah. missing from the story and i guess we just assume that like everything was well and good and that these are like the things that they wanted to note in their <laughs> romance but i really yeah i think i think that's one thing i really like this book is i felt like it was very relatable for me there's a lot of parts of this book where i was like yeah no that i get that like, that's how I feel for both of the characters. Yeah. So, I liked it. I felt like I could really put myself into the book, too, which is something that I don't feel like I can do a lot with romance books, because mm-hmm. they're so, like, I'm a hot, skinny girl, and <laughs> I have never had any real problems in my life. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not me, but... <laughs> right. So, like, my biggest issue is that I don't know which job to take for this these multi-million dollar companies. My biggest issue is I have two sexy ass men fighting over me right now, and I don't know which one I want. The bad boy or the good boy? I don't know. Yeah, meanwhile, Anna's over here like, I don't like when people touch my hair, and my ex boyfriend is the worst person on the planet. <laughs> yeah, girl. And whilst my dad's dying, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I just never feel good enough for anything yeah. ever. Ugh. It's such a yeah. good book. I think we've covered all the important I think so stuff. Too. Her sister sucks real yeah. bad. So Biggest bad. Takeaway. Also relatable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Not my sisters. To that. Okay. <laughs> Not my sisters. But yeah, relatable. Having siblings that suck. <laughs> um, okay. True. Well, that I believe is the conclusion of the Heart Principle by. Helen Wong. Um, excellent book. If you're here and you didn't read the book, what the heck? What the heck? Yeah, I trusted you. I trusted you to close off 
at the end of the spoiler free section. And yet here you are. But you but also keep so explaining watching to our stuff, please. Yeah, but also <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> uh this will be out uh it on the this will be out in a couple of days. Yeah. I keep re- I was like, it's gonna be out before Valentine's Day. Today is Valentine's Day. Okay. I'm just the twenty twenty. It's, it's been a rough know. week. It's been a rough week. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, next week we will be reading this blood that binds us or something like that. Yeah. Have you started it yet? No. Me neither. It's actually, I was actually gonna, okay, well, if you haven't started it yet, then maybe we'll talk about doing something else, because it's, like, on back order for my library right now. Ooh, okay. Um. You'll, well, next you'll week, see what we, we do next week when we do it. Yeah. Next week, you'll find out. It's gonna be a surprise for all of us. Mind your business. <laughs> yeah. Um, and are we recording this on Saturday, and it's currently Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, we are. <laughs> So we're going to read something in the next few days, and I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. That's right. Um, so we have romance, though, because it's February. Hello. Hello. All right. Well, I guess, um, if you want to go and follow us on our social medias, so we've got a TikTok, an Instagram, and a Pinterest. It's all at the Woody Banter Book Club. Um, posting on there. Posting things. Yeah. Uh, we, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. We love you. You're the best. If you're listening to us on anywhere you get your podcasts, specifically Spotify, <laughs> though, we love you. Thank you for Thank listening. You. Yeah. I like that you do ASMR for the audio listeners <laughs> specifically because the video people just watch you get really close to your mic. <laughs> I know. Um, thanks yeah, for thank watching. you guys for watching. And if you want to buy a bookmark, we have an Etsy store. And go buy a bookmark on there. But yeah, I think I think all that's left to say is Happy, happy reading. reading.